Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Mic. We are in our beautiful Music Town studios here in Hockey Town, downtown Detroit. And I have another very special guest, guest plural today. Uh, so please welcome Rochelle Clark. Hi, Rochelle. Hi. And Jason Dunny. Hello. Hello, you both of you. Welcome. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Thanks for having us. I know. It's been so long. I'm I can't even remember how long it's been. And we were talking about that on the way out here. I was like, when is the last time that you saw Pam? Because it's been, it's been a hot minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite a while. So welcome, both of you. So glad to get you in here. We tried a, a while ago, and just things didn't work out. So finally got you in here. So anxious to, uh, to talk to you both and hear some music, as I see both ready with guitars. Yes. Um, so good. So, um, well, basically, you're my guest and Jason's helping you today, kind of. That's yeah. how it, it started out. As, you know, I'm the decoration. You're the, and a good decorator in a fun, very indeed. De- very good decoration. Hey. Uh, he'll be he'll be your uh, he'll be your sidekick there today. But you guys play out a lot too, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But you're not officially a duo. Correct. Yeah. And it's we're starting to do it more and more, mm-hmm. just uh, kind of by choice as well. Cause okay. Um, otherwise, we can both get busy with our own projects and whatnot, and we won't see much of each other if we don't book some gigs together. Yeah, we sometimes we we have this lame thing where we say it's our date night <laughs> if we do a gig together because oh, really? it's like okay. you know, well, let's However do the show do together, and then we get a yeah. night together. <laughs> Oh, can't be that bad. You guys. Well, it's, it's sometimes, not. no, it's not always, but sometimes it can be like two ships passing in the night. So Yeah. Well, you both are very busy. Um, you know, I know, Jason, first of all, you've, you've, you've been doing this and you've got a huge career. I mean, you've, you've been all over the place. Um, Somewhat, Playing and yeah. everything. There's, there's definitely, you know, it's always that six to eight months ahead. It's, it's you know, the calendar is always pretty full. Okay. Which is good. A good it, thing it for is, musicians. It is good. Yeah. yeah. And thankfully, a lot of it's uh, fairly, you know, local, regional. Uh, you know, Michigan's a huge state, so I don't have to leave the state all that often, which is a blessing. Yeah, because you're not originally from Michigan, if I remember. Correct. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, yes. Ohio man in here. <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and Rochelle, it's really interesting how you, um, you've been... You know, you've been singing with other artists, mostly in this area, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of backup vocals and everything. And, of course, the first time I met you and knew of you was with John Net, um, John with um, Potter's Field. Yes. Yeah. Draw a blink there. Um, so, and you guys still do that, right? We do occasionally, occasionally. whenever we have time. Um, okay. Yeah. But that's been going on at least a decade, right? God, yeah. <laughs> It's so nuts to think about. But, yeah, it's been like 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I thought Potter's Field was was done and took just you guys well, we had decided taken, to take um, a break. We had taken some time. Okay. Um, just, uh, you know, life and careers and, and all of that good stuff. But um, we will always make time to play music together because, oh, you know, we love each other. And I'm still proud of all of the music that we've created together. Well, not just the music. I've got to bring this up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, yes. What <laughs> the heck? Um, okay, if you go Facebook, I think, is where most of these are. You guys, you and John, do these things. That, and I don't know the um, the software that changes it, but you've got <laughs> your... <laughs> The okay, Snapchat how do I explain filter. This? The, th- the what filter? <laughs> the Snapchat filter. Thank you. That's what it is. Okay. So you both have these huge teeth <laughs> and, and like one eye. eyes. <laughs> yeah. And mm-hmm. it's just hilarious. And yeah. it's like, you know, the first one I popped on one is like, what the heck is this? And you guys are hilarious because your voices are really high, which is uh-huh. funny in itself. Um, and you guys are just promoting what you're doing. And I thought, ingenious, because I watch this whole thing. It's like, Okay, I gotta watch the next one and the next one. I think there's only three or it's four out so there. It's so silly. And, oh my but, gosh! I mean, if you can't have fun with it, then you shouldn't be doing it. Well, there's <laughs> always there's always a bag of Oreos nearby. Oh, it just oh, yes, always. yes. Oreos is shoot. I was gonna bring Oreos some Oreos are in life. for you. <laughs> okay. I just had to say, oh, that was so funny. And it's like, well, oh, people look it. for those, and it's like a great way to promote what you're doing. And it, it's like, okay, if if I didn't know you guys and I saw those, I would think. Oh, these guys have fun. This should be a good show, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And we do have fun. Oh, yeah. 
I remember you guys, you know, when I, when I did have you guys on as Potter's Field. Yeah. I do remember that. Um, it was just crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> and you, you know, that really shows confidence to put those up there that are on there forever. You know, confidence or stupidity, it's... <laughs> It's all a mixed bag. I, I, it takes very little to embarrass me, <laughs> so I'm always game for those type of things because it's just fun and different, and okay. Okay. you know. Well, when the show's done, then go on Facebook and go to <laughs> Rochelle Clark's Facebook page, and you'll see these little snippets. <laughs> Fun stuff, yeah. Uh, mention that to John next time you see him. It was I will. Like, hilarious. I will. He'll love that. Oh my gosh, I, I just I was cracking up when I hope you know, no one was around, but it was like I could have. I was laughing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. That's, yeah, it's a great promotional. Well, that was. I'll, that. I'll yeah. give cre- give credit where credit is due. That was John's idea, one hundred percent. It works. It works. Well, um, all right. So I'm I'm glad to hear you guys are still playing together as Potter's Field. Yeah. And, you know, even though it's not as often and everything. Yeah. Of course, John ended up going. You know, taking. He's a, a paramedic. A paramedic. Yeah. Now. Went to the EMT yes. thing and yeah. Yes. So yeah, good for him. So Absolutely. Yeah. I know a lot of musicians are doing other things, and that's what he went for. So really the, the spectrum you know emt and uh, music but so you guys so you with john were potter's field and you did that you still do that but mm-hmm. started over a decade ago and then then all of a sudden you decide you're going to go solo and um and we're going to talk about that in okay. just a moment so first of all let's hear a song let's jump into a, a song is this going to sure. be one of your solo songs that's coming up um it is and it's actually Um, A nice transition um, from what we were just talking about. This uh, is uh, an older Potter's Field tune that I've been doing solo. Uh, The song has had, uh, it started off meaning one thing when it was being written, and it has just shifted and evolved over time. And um, this is actually the title track for the EP that's getting released on Friday. So um, this is called In Time. A fool, but it don't last. Days go by like so much rain, a whelming flood of joy and pain. Mountain high, belly low, we do our best with what we. Thank you. 
Nice. <laughs> Rochelle uh, Clark and Jason Denny with us here on Behind the Mic for your upcoming EP title <laughs> track. Very nice. I was thinking back um, when you were playing that, um, I don't know what it was, maybe it was the guitar. It just made me think of olden days. I'm not sure why, but I was like, yeah, is that an older guitar? Or maybe just the wood part of it. I think it's the wood part okay. of it. Yeah, I got this guitar um, about two years ago. Okay. And um, one of the things that I loved about it, I, I was drawn to its looks first because it just... I loved the mahogany and yeah. the darker finish, and it looked kind of old timey. I like it; it's very pretty. Thank um, you. Can you say pretty? A guitar is pretty. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, beautiful guitar. <laughs> um, but it made me think, you know, because I know you had um, you, your family, you had music all around you. So yeah. I was looking at them, thinking, I wonder if that was your your grandpa's or your dad's or something. <laughs> I wish. <You> know. <laughs> no, because they both played uh, instrument, or at least they both uh, sang. They right? were drummers. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I missed that part of the genetic pool. <laughs> um, but yeah, my grandpa uh, was a drummer here in Detroit, and uh, my dad was a drummer too. Okay. Mm -hmm. No desire to go into drumming? Oh, no. I'm. Um, we actually were joking around about this a couple weeks ago that I think both of us are like frustrated drummers. Um, I just don't have any rhythm. <laughs> but you're a musician. How can you not have rhythm? I mean, I have rhythm, but like if I, I have... Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see me on a dance floor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, no, it was just one of those things that um, it wasn't until I got a little older that I realized, oh, why didn't I try drums at yeah. some point? And, you know, there's still time. It's never too late. There's, yeah, It's never it. too late. Yeah. yeah. Seems have... uh, nothing else that could be good therapy, just bang on some oh, yeah. stuff. You know, I, oh, I, was, I would love to do that. I would love to just, you know, just let out your frustrations, play drums. What the... Yeah, yeah. I have to give serious props to every drummer, though. I mean, we can just show up somewhere and pull out our guitar and sit on a picnic table somewhere yeah. and, yeah, and yeah. play. But uh, with drummers, I mean, that's... That's a you, lot of dedication for uh, all that. You took the words gear. right out of mouth. He said, if they lug, lug those all those pieces and set up those things, <laughs> yeah, take it down constantly, that's, that's definitely yeah. dedication. And all four limbs doing something different. I mean, that still blows my mind. Oh, yeah. Hard Good. enough to play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, a harmonica. You know, throw it in your back pocket and go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, so I was that was what came to mind when I yeah. saw that beautiful guitar you were playing. So um, well, it's funny that you say that because that was one of the things that drew me to it at first, and then and then I played it, and it was kind of just love instantly. I was like, this is the one. <laughs> and and I can imagine um, that when you go look for a new guitar, or something you go into, you know, a guitar store, or guitar center, whatever it may be, and and you just look, and it's like. That's one. And then once you play it, you know that you're yes. meant to be, right? Yes. Yes. And Jason was really um, helpful during that whole process, and he kept trying to tell me, just spend time playing the instrument. Just see how it feels in your hand and, you know, how comfortable you feel, like, physically with it. And that really is the most important thing. But yeah. um, I'm not going to lie. I was at first just like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> Well, first impression is, you right. know, <laughs> it's important. How long have you been playing uh, the guitar? And were you officially taught, or did you learn on your own? Um, uh oh, I took guitar lessons from this guy, oh, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I taught at Herb David Guitar Studio for thirteen oh, yes. years, yeah. and uh, yeah. and I gave lessons to her yeah. and, husband um, uh, initially, and then. Um, so is that that's where you first met then, through the guitar lessons? Yes. Uh, yeah, at her oh, guitar studio. I didn't know studio. that. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet. And she was always dedicated, so it worked out well. Yeah. <laughs> I forget about that sometimes. <laughs> I, and are you still teaching? Uh, I do. I'm in. I'm Mondays and Tuesdays. I'm in Birmingham at oh, Detroit okay. Guitar. Okay. On uh, West Maple, and then. Wednesday through Friday, it's just based on availability. Uh, some private students out in Chelsea, Dexter, Ann Arbor. Okay. It always fills in the cracks a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I did not know that. I'm so Yeah. Well, here I'm thinking you learned your dad or your, you know, your granddad. Your <laughs> well, music. I mean, I picked up the guitar when I was in high school, and 
I had uh, an uncle uh, that tried showing me how to play some just like basic chords okay. and, um, you know, I would like fiddle around with it, but I never took it seriously. And then kind of the same thing in college, like I knew some basic chords and um, could, you know, do the typical like college hangout thing where I'd be like, I know I can play a song <laughs> type of thing. Um, but I had always wanted to learn to play the instrument uh, a little more seriously. And at that point, I wasn't even thinking that I was going to be playing out. Mm -hmm. I just, it was something that I wanted to do for myself. Okay. Um, and it just kind of opened up a whole other side of me that at that point I didn't even really know existed or that music was going to be something that I wanted to do as much as I am doing it. Um, and so, yeah, I took well, a good teacher. <laughs> he was an amazing that, you know? <laughs> teacher, an amazing teacher and was really patient. Um, because, uh, it's not as easy as it looks, <laughs> especially when you're singing and playing at the same time. I can remember trying to do that and just getting so frustrated, <laughs> like, oh, my God, why isn't this? It looks so easy. Well, it's a lot of practice. <laughs> well, you would not do well in drums, as he said, with four, you know, two arms and two legs going no. at the same time. You no. would have a problem. Okay. <laughs> I get that now. <laughs> I know. I know where my strengths and weaknesses lie. <laughs> Well, how about vocals? Because you have a beautiful voice. So did oh, you have training um, for voice? I did. Um, okay. So I grew up singing, and that was the main thing, like, in my family. Everybody would sing and, um, you know, hang out. I have a lot of memories of my family when we would go visit my grandparents out in the out in the barn singing and just kind of hanging out. Um, but, uh, you know, I grew up singing in church, mm -hmm. And uh, I took uh, my first vocal lesson when I was in college, and I had a really wonderful instructor. And again, it was just something that I was doing for me because I loved to sing, and um, I knew that I wanted to keep singing. I just didn't know at that point. It was like, well, maybe I'll sing, you know, in church or a worship type of situation. And um, yeah, so I was taking lessons from somebody okay. in college, and she was. Yeah, I haven't thought about her in a long time. She was wonderful. She taught me a lot of really good um, breath techniques. Which is key. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, she was an opera singer. And oh, yes. They don't mess around. <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't mess around with that stuff. And, I, and you can, if you can learn opera and sing opera, it really helps whatever, whatever genre of music you go into. Oh, yeah. You know, the basics of opera is, like you said, the breaths and everything, and you can control it. It's huge. It's yeah. incredible what those singers can do. <laughs> so so your family um, in the garage, all of that was called the Garage Buzzards. The, oh, my God. <laughs> yes. My uncle still has that band. <laughs> <laughs> what a name. I love it. <laughs> the Garage Buzzards. Yes. Oh, my God. I mean, God. how many families just, you know, they love singing together and just having a good time with music and everything, and they literally name the band, the family band, that they just go out and play in the garage together. As I mean, and it sounds terrible, but it's just fun. You know, I can remember, like, I miss that. I'm, I I miss that. My grandma, um, I, my grandma used to sit on a milk crate, and she had a little lap steel that she would play, Aww. and she would sing, and um, she had a... A ukulele, she used to call it her Hawaiian guitar. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just like old country songs and stuff. And as a kid, I thought it was so stupid and so <laughs> lame. And, you know, it you was all being done for a purpose. You right? appreciate those things. It's sad that that happens, but you appreciate them the further removed you are from them. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah that's not something that everybody did. And, um, you know, it was a kind of a way for our family to. Music is such a great unifier in yeah. that way, and it definitely provided a lot of those type of moments for my family at that time. So, yeah, Garage Buzzards, my Uncle Art is still <laughs> keeping that going strong. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just cool that you, you, know, you grew up with music all around you and everything, and then, you know, you weren't really pursuing that, you know, mm -hmm. in college and everything, but here you are, and now you, you're at a point now um, that you decide to go solo. Yeah. Which... From what I remember, you being up by yourself was not always a comfortable no. thing for you. No. 
<laughs> so it just really just like, wow, good for you. I mean, you just literally opened up and going solo. So there had to be something you had to step over a line and like, OK, I can do this kind of thing. It was. Yeah, it was kind of a challenge to myself personally. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I've been singing with other people and doing a lot of background stuff um, and uh, when things started to change with the Potter's Field, where we weren't playing as much, um, I thought, I really love doing this, and I mm -hmm. want to keep doing this. And okay. so it started small, like, okay, I can do, I can do, I can do this show on my own. No one's available to do it with me. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I can do it on my own. And it was almost like daring myself to, like, okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. And I liked it. so it's been. It's probably been about two years of me kind of um, continuing to challenge myself and be like, no, you can do this. And um, I definitely feel a lot more comfortable uh, carrying a show on my own. Good for you. Yeah. I love that. I dared myself. Yeah. I, you can use that. I mean, that's <laughs> not just musicians. I'm thinking I can dare myself to do what I need to do, you know, yeah. kind of a thing. I love that. Well, Get and you going. One of the things like, we've talked about um, is I just kept thinking, if I don't do this now, then when? Mm. When am I going to do it? So yeah. why not go for it? And if it doesn't work out, then at least I tried. Well, and this, it's such an ebb, ebb and flow kind of thing. It, it's not doing it, you know, 24-7 necessarily. Right. The music is there always as a thread through every day, but... It's kind of interesting to see how things develop, relationships with other people, other musicians, projects from a duo to a six piece, mm -hmm. and just it never ends. Yeah. But it, you have to start it, it yeah. at some point. So it's good that the direction was taken. And he was really encouraging. Like, yeah, you can do that. Go for it. <laughs> good job. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All she has to do is is let those pipes soar and uh, through the first song everything after that is usually pretty easy okay well thanks you're welcome he's your he's your decoration that's very encouraging right he is. <laughs> yes that's why I keep him around <laughs> that and many other reasons yeah. but we how about we about uh, I'm sorry what <laughs> we don't have to talk about this <laughs> <laughs> You never who never know where you'll end up with your guitar teacher, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go any further. Right? Okay, okay. How about a song, guys? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll help you out here. Song time. <laughs> All right, this is one that uh, actually kind of goes out. I lost my dad uh, two years ago now, and uh, yes. uh, this is always kind of aimed in his general direction. Um, it's called a, a honey hangover. True love on a cloud so high I can't come down. Found I was wrong and the fall was quite long. The girl's no longer around. I picked myself up, brushed it all off, went out to find sympathy. Came in the shape of a bottle. Lying naked and empty by me Always dream from that same lovely bottle Sunday to Saturday ride Ending the same love's painful game Can't stop drinking that trouble inside Sunday to Saturday ride
she always looks so pretty But when we meet at my favorite bar Always believe this time she won't leave The love that we share will go far But the morning dawns a little sooner Then my head and my heart will allow so clear when nobody's near got a honey hangover now always dream from that same lovely bottle Sunday to Saturday ride ending the same love's painful game can't stop drinking that trouble inside Sunday <laughs> so that's your song, Jason? That's yes. Jason. Okay. Um, which made me also, while you were singing that, right, remember uh, well, when I first met you, which was uh, many years ago. Many years ago. <laughs> many years ago. Um, you know, and I had you on my other shows previously, and you would never sing. That was not in your, that was no way. I mean, it, you did yeah. all the guitar finger picking and everything, which was just blew me away. And then all of a sudden, someone encouraged you to start singing. And You've really come a long way as far as uh, vocals go. It sounded great. Oh, well, thank you. I remember you were terrified of singing or, or didn't run to. You didn't feel you confident know, in it, it or was something. Just, I, part of it maybe being the, that quiet, shy kid. Uh, when I started playing guitar, it was such a personal for me thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I, that community aspect and, and growing up in a, in a bluegrass family, seeing how much fun people had singing together and then finding a love for harmony. So I started singing harmony, but you know, so I knew a bunch of choruses and and would never ever dare to sing a song on my own. <laughs> but then, you know, you after a while, not having enough people to sing harmony with, I got tired of waiting around. <laughs> That's so one reason. <laughs> just started writing my own tunes, and and I've um, written songs with other people, and I, I love the process. But now I have something to say, and it's it's just nice to. It's a different kind of connection. Mm -hmm. um, instrumental music has its own place and it reaches a lot of people for sure but a good simple three chord song um, reaches so many more people and I've kind of fallen in love with that and it's just it's fun mm -hmm. it's really fun and he has a he has beautiful songs mm -hmm. outside of the instrumental stuff I I mean I'm biased but it's a it's his a whole, songs are really beautiful it's a whole new place um, the music doesn't have to be as intricate as the world I was in at one time. And uh, there, there, I guess there's, I get to show my sensitive side. <laughs> there's some stuff in there. Is that, that what you call it? Well, you know, because there's uncharacteristically, there's a lot of uh, uh, quieter, um, just pretty soft songs uh -huh. and, and content um, that I never thought that I would have ventured into. But after doing it, it's, you know, you don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. um, I love blues and rock, and, and 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 there's nothing quite like the energy of bluegrass. But there's something about that whole uh, singer-songwriter thing. Whether you're with a band or, or two or three people, or playing by yourself, mm -hmm. there's something about those songs that can still stand on their own with just a voice and a guitar. Right. And uh, again, we can do it anywhere we want to. And uh, there's something just very comforting about that. Do you still play? There's a trio you were in with the bluegrass. I forgot the Thunderwood. Thunderwood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. guys still together? Or yeah, still, okay. still going strong. We released They're playing a, tonight. Oh, okay. We released a live record uh, in an Indiana venue um, back in September, and uh, it's just been it's it's a lot of energy, a lot of fun, and uh, festival season is uh, we're booking into festival season okay. right now yeah. for next summer. So. Um, Look for Thunderwood whenever you can. Yeah, I've seen you guys live. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's got a great us going. You know? Oh, it's, yeah. it's yeah. fast it's and fun. furious yeah, for sure. Fun, fun, and fun. lots of great singing. So yeah. you know, it's a lot of fun. And so, um, 
Now, we've heard a couple songs. Well, the first song was your title track of the EP. Mm -hmm. You'd already released a single, right, uh, for this? I did. Um, so, uh, again, going back to, like, daring myself to do <laughs> something, um, I had written a song that I really loved and was um, – I wanted to record it and because uh -huh. uh, I hadn't done that just as something that I had written. Um, and so uh, we went into Willis Sound. And at that point, I wasn't thinking anything beyond, let's just record the song. And I thought, OK, well, I'm happy with how that turned out. So let's let's put it out there. And um, it was kind of almost like a business card, like, hey, so I can do I can do stuff too. Okay, <laughs> um, yeah, makes sense. And it kind of steamrolled into, uh, no, I I would like to record something of of my own. Um, and so that song Jericho kind of paved the way for uh, the EP. So um, they recorded in separate two separate years <laughs> in different studios, okay. but um, it will be it will be on the EP. Okay. Okay, which is coming out, it's now. Right? Friday. Friday yes. Actually, um, a half hour ago, I got a call from uh, the company that is doing the pressing of the CDs, uh -huh. and I can pick them up today. <laughs> oh, you're like, oh, well, I got to go do a show, darn it. Yeah, I can. I know it's got to be just, what, is that, what does that feel like when you, your Anxiety? Very first thing, your first <laughs> album, EP, whatever, is, is print, and you're going to have a physical copy. What is it? I mean, it's got to be just off the charts how you feel I'm really excited about it yeah um I mean every step of the way it's been like oh my god we're do okay I'm doing this we're doing this <laughs> <laughs> um you know when I got the artwork and um and then we got to sit in our living room a couple of weeks ago and listen to the mastered files the Ooh. final mm. version and um I, rem I remember we were like drinking beer and sitting in our living room and we listened to the last song and he looked over me and he's like what do you think and I was crying <laughs> and it's not because it's going to be like the best thing you've ever heard but I was really proud of okay yeah we did this the inception of a song reaching what it's become yeah and which is still not the end even though that's how it's recorded that you know the songs are still living breathing things but I think just feeling that process, mm -hmm. watching that process, I'm sure you were probably thinking about that process and mm -hmm. landing in that moment, at that moment, hearing them all kind of come to, um, to some shape, you know? Yeah. Um, I haven't felt that feeling in a long time, but... So you were feeling it through her yeah. experience here. That's Absolutely. cool. Well, and yeah. I have to give Jason some credit here because he, um, this wouldn't have happened without him honestly. Um, he has been, cause we have that in common. We're both shy, shyer than people I think would assume. Okay. Um, and for a long time I have been very scared and felt like, well, no one is going to want to come listen to me and no one's going to want to listen to my songs. I've always felt like I had to be with somebody else, um, musically. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he has really encouraged me to like, no, it's, it's okay for you. You should find out what you want to sound like and what you want to say. And, um, so, uh, putting the EP together, like he helped me, uh, with arrangements. Um, and he produced, I mean, he helped produce the, the record and his ear was, those songs wouldn't be shaped the way they are on the EP if it wasn't for him kind of just gently, Hey, how about we do this? Or how about this comes in here? And um, nice, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate well, he's, it. You know, you're welcome. You've got the experience <laughs> on that end. How many CDs out? Probably. I've played on uh, well over well over forty, but yeah. Um, gosh. And your own. And I mean, I've, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tons. <laughs> and I haven't really dedicated any of my own uh, vocals to record yet. I'm you still. You haven't. No, I haven't. What are you waiting for, Jason? It's just yeah, uh, exactly. Come on, dare well, yourself. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> As Rochelle says, <laughs> once Thunderwood hit the ground running, yeah, um, you know, because that's largely, you know, all of my original music, and okay, um, I just kind of funneled everything into that, uh -huh. and so there there will be a, a solo EP, okay, at some point, 
Um, cause I, I got some stuff recorded and then life just gets in the way and family stuff and, um, children, you know, just all kinds of things. They're excuses, but, <laughs> but now I get to funnel it through her as well. So it's, I don't need to do anything. <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> you do. You do. I will. I will. Come on, Jason. <laughs> We're having fun though. Well, that's, you know, hey, enjoy, you know, enjoy. Don't feel like, you know, God, I got to get this out just because, you know, that you don't want that either. So, yeah. Um, that's the new mantra. 2020 is just kind of, you know, go with the flow and try not to make too much pressure of anything. Yeah. Just have fun with it. And whatever happens, happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know. If there's no fun, what is there? I mean. Amen. <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Okay, just random questions, and both, okay. you can both answer these. Best advice ever given to you? Ooh. Don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was, that was shared with me at least 22 years ago, oh, wow. and uh, it's been hard to remember, but that was the best advice that I was ever given. Mm-hmm. Um. So several years ago, I was going through a really, um, really, really dark time, and uh, somebody that I don't know wrote on a piece of paper uh, an acronym for fear. Okay. And um, it was false evidence appearing real. And to keep that in mind as I'm moving forward and to try to live out like to live from a place where I'm not letting fear control my perspective. And I don't know this person's name. I've never seen her since. I feel like angels come in many forms. That's hands down the best advice I've ever been given. And she knew nothing about what was going on in my life at that time. But I think what was going on was so evident that Mm. I was like just really struggling and, um, it was at a Potter's Field gig, and she just put this written note in my guitar case, and I still have it. I carry it with me. <laughs> okay, say it again, what it stands for. Fear. Fal- yes. False evidence appearing real. I uh, like it. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. It is, it is. Interesting, though. You don't know who that was, and you've I've never n- seen her since. No. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just never know. It's weird. <laughs> All right. Your dream dinner guests. Oh, I feel like ours might be wildly different. Do they have to be alive? No. Okay. No. no. (laughs) (laughs) Give me like three people you would love to sit at a table with. Oh, man. I don't mean to stump you on this question. No, there's there's a couple. I mean, I don't know what it says about me if they're immediately (laughs) musicians because that's the the only place my, my brain goes to. But I don't, you know, I don't know why. But I'd love Bill Monroe and uh, Michael oh. Hedges. If Both I could good. Just, if I could just have dinner with those two, that would be absolutely yeah. amazing. Do you have a third? Uh, not really. No. No. How about you, Rochelle? Anybody that you would love to? Um, I think uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Ooh. Mm, nice. Um. Obama, and uh, I'm going to be sappy, my dad. (laughs) That'd be a good dinner as well. I think it would be. It'd be (laughs) fascinating. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) If you had access to a time machine, where and when would you go? Tudor period of England. (laughs) You would, you would. I am sorry. I am obs- <laughs> My uh, my grandma on my dad's side is uh, is English, and um, so I did inherit a little kind of obsession with the monarchy. Okay. From her. <laughs> and um, I love history and the Tudor period, like King Henry, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. is so fascinating to me, and I would love to just be a fly on the wall <laughs> and like observe all of that stuff that was happening around that time. Jason could tell you, I'm yeah, I'm a sucker for that time period. Okay. Yeah, if I could be uh, enter into it like at the age of 21, I would probably go to 
like uh, Haight Ashbury, Ooh. 67, 68, yeah. somewhere around that time frame. That would be a cool experience. I just, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I know there's plenty of other things even much, much further back that have interested me, but there's something about that time period that it, it, everlasting. I mean, there's just so much that happened in the span of about five years, uh, late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't born until 71, so I would have loved to have been a, a young adult at that time. That would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I went to San Fran, uh, and we were just going around, and you you can figure out where people's homes were, and it was the weirdest thing. There was the home that Janis Joplin lived in, and parked in front was a Mercedes Benz. It's like, this is weird. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is but weird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was very strange, but... I'm sorry, I digress there. Let's no, go back to your right. questions. Um, Fago Verners or Town Club? Oh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Fago Verners or Town Club? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Verners. Verners, yeah, definitely Verners. Verners. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Fago, but Verners all the way. Oh. <laughs> Verners. Verners. Do you yeah. have a favorite Detroit area festival? Ooh. Actually, Detroit based. I don't. I don't know. Um, Metro Detroit. No, I can't say I do. Actually, okay. I actually, um, I like the Mopop Festival. Uh, I haven't been in a couple of years, mm-hmm. but I, I went um, when I was in college several times and had a great. It was a great experience. They always have a good lineup. In they always have yeah. a good lineup. Yeah. yeah. All right, your most memorable music moment. Hmm. I was just talking about this the other day. Oh, please, sure. Mine's not on, um, it's not on stage. Um, it's uh, <laughs> Debbie Harry sitting on my lap in, the, in, in the green room <laughs> at Bogart's in Cincinnati. Yeah, way, way back in the 90s. Uh, I opened for the Jazz Passengers, and Debbie Harry was the guest vocalist. Okay. And uh, for certain reasons, she shared my dressing room with me and my manager. And this is before cell phones, you know. So, of course, at the very end of our little uh, shared experience, she sat on my lap, kissed me on the cheek, and it was just one of those things. It's like no one's ever going to believe this. That's that's just one thing I always remember. <laughs> Come on, it was Blondie. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. The, the show actually paled in comparison to that moment, so... <laughs> That was after the show. That was uh, before. Um, that was before the show. After sound check. Okay. Yeah. Did that like I mess with that. your mind before you went on stage? Uh, no. It just it was one of those things that you know. And my manager, he was a an English guy. Uh, he had a time with it, um, but it was just one of those quiet things that just happened, and no one really ever knew about it. I just kind of kept it to myself. You know, nice. I love those kinds Until of. Now. I love those kinds of moments. <laughs> yeah, those are some special moments. You, and you know, there's gonna be, there's got to be like thousands of those kinds of moments. But because we didn't have cell phones, yeah, you know, and yeah. way to capture all that, it would just be just. You know, I love finding out those kinds of things. That is so cool. Yeah. 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 There are plenty of others that I can't share. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my favorite musical moment happened about a year ago. I was playing. Um, a songwriters in the round show at the Farmington Civic Theater and um, I had just started playing a new song and the power went out the lights went out and um, it was November and it was really cold there had been like a storm that day Um, so I'm thinking oh my god the show's not gonna go on it's too cold to sit in here with no lights and no heat and all of a sudden somebody just yells out got it (laughs) And you just see this sea of um, cell phones with the oh. flashlights. The audience didn't want to leave, and so they just held up. There was like 120 people in this little theater, and all of them had their cell phone flashlights that on. That is so cool. And we finished most of the concert with no power, all unplugged, just lit by cell phones. It was I will never forget that moment. It was Magical. really, really yeah. cool. Yeah. And I'm sure the audience will never forget that moment too. I hope not, yeah. because that doesn't happen very yeah. often. That's a good one. I like that. Thanks. Oh, it just gives you one that's just like a warm and fuzzy feeling from one of those, you yeah, know, kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. All right. Well then how about your favorite non music pastime? 
I like to read. Okay. Um, I was just same. Yeah. Yeah, lots of reading going on in our house. We buy, we often get each other books. Like every year for Christmas for the last few years, I've asked for books because um, I used to be a really like voracious reader, mm -hmm. and um, life gets busy. I haven't been reading as much, and so it's been kind of a good like. Oh yeah, I've got new things to read. Fiction, nonfiction, both. Um, I lean more toward fiction, but um, I do have a couple of nonfiction books that I really love. I have one on the Salem witch trials that you got me that I think I've been mm -hmm. <laughs> like reading off and on for like two years. Two years. <laughs> Get through the book. It's like fifteen hundred <laughs> pages. <laughs> It's really thick. You had like, oh, what happened to Fred chapter one? Let me go back. <laughs> Start over. It's hard, like, dedicating, uh, just committing to one book. Yes. That's, I mean, I don't know how you can read several at the same time, which I've seen you do. Yeah. Yes. You know, get them mixed up. And I don't. Going. Okay. I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> in, in doing music, for me, full time, um, like, so much of my, and because of teaching, almost every second of the day sometimes is centered around music. Mm-hmm. So I just have to get out of my head a little bit, and reading seems to be the mm -hmm. the best way for me to do that. And you know, guilty pleasure. Uh, I, I read comic books as a kid, you know, and a, a, in my my early twenties, it kind of like ah, I'm too old to do this. We had a trip out to Portland, Oregon, and uh, this comic store just looked really cool. I hadn't been in a comic store in well over probably twenty years. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and she gave me the go ahead to go in. <laughs> And I was just like, really? Okay, well, okay. And I See walked you in three hours. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I walked out with three graphic novels. And and then um, I think Christmas that year, uh, I was gifted with uh, three graphic novels, mm -hmm. uh, John Constantine. And I haven't stopped. It's like the best escape that I can get to. Okay. Um, so lots of reading going on. Cool. If I were more physical, there might be some other activities, but I don't move a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Mm. That's a good one. I would say seize the opportunity <laughs> and don't, don't be quiet and watch someone else take your opportunity. Mm. I've done that so many times just to, uh, mm. to give it to somebody else. That's got to be hard. I wish that I had taken a little bit more of a, mm -hmm. just a little bit more of my own joy. Um, yeah, that'd be the, the one thing. Don't let it pass you by. Mm -hmm. Seize the opportunity. I think I'd probably tell myself to trust myself more, mm -hmm. trust my gut more, and to not be so, um, to not be so fixated on other people's definition of who I'm supposed to be. Good advice, both of you. Thanks. <laughs> Getting heavy in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for a song. Let's liven it up a little bit. <laughs> All right, is this going to be another one from your upcoming EP? Yes. Okay. Yes. This was actually the song that brought the lights down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh oh. Hope you guys are ready in there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this is called Wish Me Well. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So hard, so hard to put the 
For the new EP, which is uh, coming out this mm-hmm. Friday. This Friday. You're probably going from here to go pick them up, though, right? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> not a bad way to spend lunch. Yeah. No, not at all. So you have this. Uh, you have a big CD release party coming up? Uh, yes. So Friday, this Friday, January 24th at Trinity House um, at 8 p.m., uh, and we're going to have a full band okay. with us. Oh. Yes. So um, it'll be myself and Jason uh, on an accruement of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll have uh, John Sprandy on upright bass, Keith Billick on banjo, and Mike Shimon on drums. Okay. Okay. So it'll definitely be uh, a very different way to experience the tunes, and I'm we're both really looking forward to it. We had rehearsal on Sunday, and I was like, "This, oh, this is great." <laughs> Trinity House, good place to to have that too. It That's is a great place. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. very warm and inviting. Yes, for sure. I think I'm I'm hoping we'll have a a packed house. Yeah. yeah. Tickets are still available, so okay. okay, good. And they can get that through Trinity House or through yeah. Um, they um so uh, Trinity House uh, has them available online. Okay. Um, I've got stuff all over my um my uh, Facebook page and your website um, on my website yeah. too, RochellePClark.com. Um, and um, you know, I'm sure there will be some tickets at the door as yeah. well. Okay. Well, to find out where Rochelle is playing and all of her stuff, again, go to your website, <laughs> Facebook page, and check out those videos on her Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a good laugh, you need a good laugh, you're feeling down, just go watch these things <laughs> with your Oreo cookies. <laughs> Fun stuff. So thanks for coming in, both of you. Well, it's been a pleasure. I haven't seen you guys in so long. Yeah. It's like, gosh, oh, my goodness. So um, thanks Happy again New for coming. Year to you. Yeah, thanks, and you too. Thank you. All the best on this. So glad you, you know, stepped out of your comfort zone and, you. and did this so thank you um, i am too yeah thinking about a second one already or no uh let's get through the first there one you go. <laughs> <laughs> i'm okay. excited at what the future holds yes it's like uh i am too finally doing it with a band these songs with a band um i'm just excited at what the next year uh could be potentially mm-hmm. um 
hopeful, very, very hopeful. Yeah. Absolutely. It feels yeah. good. Well, you keep daring yourself, which I'm, I love that. I love Thank that. Thank you. And, and you read a little piece of paper reading that. So, mm -hmm. well, find out more about them. Go to, the, again, their websites and Facebook page and find out more. Same with Jason Denny. And uh, we'll get you in here, too, just, you know, with doing your stuff and yeah. uh, a lot more of your, your things. So, eventually down the road. But right now, uh, congratulations on Thank you. stepping out of the comfort <laughs> zone and doing this for you. So, looking forward to it. And, um, and thanks to both of you for coming in. Yeah, Do appreciate well, thanks that. Thanks, man. Rochelle Clark and Jason Denny. Thank you so much. And of course, thanks to all of you out there in uh, the World Wide Web watching. We appreciate that as well. So uh, until next time, uh, for Behind the Mic, I'm Pam Rossi. Have a great week.